So what did happen to Benny Brogan, Maricom Yash and Goose? Let's jump in. So September seen the release of Shadow of the Giants by Ian Livingstone and also The Secrets of Salamonis by Steve Jackson. I've had this game book a few weeks now and I've just managed to play my way through it over the weekend. So I'm going to give you my review of the game book and my initial thoughts on it. Um, there's going to be some spoilers here but I'm trying and keep them to a minimum. Uh, I'm going to try and not give too much away uh, regarding the, the gameplay of the book. So uh, my thoughts on the game book. I really enjoyed this one. Uh, this was a very good game book being Livingstone. Uh, as I said there, I did really enjoy it. This game book did actually meet my expectations. Uh, uh, I, I did think, I was hoping this game book would be really good and it didn't let me down at all. Uh, it flowed really well, uh, the great story. The, the most important thing for the game book for me was the characters. The characters in this game book, uh, you have a really invested interest in them. Uh, I'm going to explain why. Uh, this game book was heavily influenced by coinage or gold. Uh, you have to be very careful in what uh, uh, what you're spending your money on. However, there is a lot of items in the book you don't need to have. I played around with this game book and only came across uh, several encounters. I think it was two uh, enemies I had to face. Uh, it's not over abundance and at the start of the game book anyway uh, of monster encounters you have to fight uh, com compared to the previous game book. Crystal Storms, where it was a, you're overladen with the with the monster encounters. This was a bit different, but however, I did lose a, a quite a, quite a small amount of uh, skill and luck through the choices I made in the game book as well. So this was initial thoughts at the start. Obviously, coinage was important, gold was important, same thing, obviously, and uh, your decisions you had to make, and also who you met up with in the game book as well, and. Early on in the book, uh, Ian Livingstone does tend to uh, lay out a path for you. Uh, like uh, I would say give you a handout of decisions to make. For example, there might be an old lady in the doorway or you might come across a lamp or something in the book and he's kind of guiding you to uh, to basically have a look at it or accept it. So it's, it was a path you would take earlier on in the book. However, that did change later on. Where some of the decisions uh, Ian had put out in the book uh, basically ended in uh, your death <laughs> on a wrong turn. So certainly, uh, it's a spoiler there, certainly the book itself uh, led you along the garden path maybe at the start uh, with some of the choices and later that uh, you kind of paid the price for it if you followed that same route. And as I said earlier, the game book did flow very well. Uh, it was very easy to read. Uh, I really enjoyed, I said, some of the the counters you had throughout the book and some of the characters you would meet and one here was as I mentioned at the start was a character called Benny Brogan um, who was there one minute and gone the next uh, now the path I took uh, Benny just seemed to disappear um, now I don't know uh, I've only played it once but I don't know if uh, she turned up later on if you took a different route but certainly for me uh, Benny was there at the start and then just laterally she just kind of buggered off, <laughs> disappeared, never came back. So that was Benny Brogan. Uh, so also I'm going to mention as well, the book has um, quite a lot of Celtic ties with the name Benny Brogan. Like, there's a lot of kind of, I would say, Irish theme throughout it. I'm not saying actually like there was uh, leprechauns in it, but a bit of a, a kind of Celtic uh, background theme going on. Certainly at the start, along with your know, dwarves and the elves, etc. And also, I was pleasantly surprised to come across various creatures like uh, from Greek mythology, like the Gorgon. Uh, one of the Gorgon sisters was Medusa, obviously. There was a Gorgon in it, which was one of the main characters you had to fight. Also, there's a Minotaur. Uh, if I can find him here. He was one of the guardians and also there was a centaur and also if you come across a chapter in the book there was a you could see pegasus in the sky that's the the winged horse uh, taking flight so pegasus streaked by the sky which is really interesting because a lot of uh, greek mythology creatures are really uh, something i really enjoyed uh, growing up so um, i always like like to see these type of um, creatures or monsters in these game books 
So at the start of the book, you have a choice of swords to pick, uh, from a vampire sword or a fire sword and a couple of others, I think. So I actually picked the fire sword, um, and realised later on in the book that it wasn't really that important, I don't think. Uh, to have a really specific sword. Some swords gave you a bit more attack strength, but then again, it also depended what your uh, your um, skill star and luck score was. Uh, my skill, believe it or not, was a 12. I know you find it hard to believe, but yeah, I rolled a 12 for that. I've actually got my sheet here, I'll just, and it is a mess, so um, I couldn't see an adventure sheet to download, and I wasn't, I wasn't going to write on the actual book, so if you can see that sheet there, it's a complete dog's dinner. Uh, skill 12, stamina I had 20 and luck, I think initial luck was 10, so I apologise for writing, uh, even if uh, most of the counter boxes are a dog's dinner, but uh, listen I was doing it on a sofa over the weekend and uh, a couple of beers and I really enjoyed playing this book, so yep that's my customised adventure sheet, a complete mess but however I did manage to follow it. So early on in the book, you're in a tavern called the Double Duck and you come across a couple of dwarfs uh, who you interact with and you have a chance of hiring one of them and they're called Higley or Ghibli. Uh, I actually chose Higley, so Higley was my, my my partner I had at the start of the book who would guide me on my adventure. So yeah, I'm not sure where Ghibli would take you but Higley certainly seemed to take me in the right direction. So as I continue my journey through the book with Higley, uh, we had to find uh, a fellow called Marek Omyash. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly, and that's him there. Again, this character it seemed to be very important to the, the storyline of the book, but yet, yet again, he made a very brief appearance, and uh, yeah, it wasn't it he wasn't it was integral for a, for a small portion, but latterly he wasn't the main character in the book that I thought I would be. Uh, basically travelling through my journey with, uh, it was uh, it was somebody else, so that's Marek there, so another person in the book that was really important, in fact very important to your to the your quest was a fellow called Goose, and that is him there, so this is Goose here, he looks like a weather beaten madman with a long beard and moustache, uh, he's in fact very important to your quest throughout the book, and you actually spend a lot more time with this uh, character than any other, so that's Goose, uh, and I did like this character, uh, there's a bit of humour with him as well, so I uh, had a bit of rapport with this guy, so I thoroughly enjoyed that. So the book had a great flow to it, it wasn't too, was it too difficult? It was, it was well balanced. As I said at the start, uh, the monster encounters were very, very few and far between, but that latterly changed as uh, you came into the, the latter uh, stage of, of the game book where he certainly had to uh, fight more and more creatures, and uh, it was basically a build-up, and uh, the creatures become more became more difficult, likes of the Gorgon, etc. Um, certainly. So to be honest, um, I didn't actually complete this game book. I got very close to the end, and there was an item that I didn't have, and it was a ring. Uh, so my venture ended, but I did have a uh, continue on, to basically to have a wee look to see if uh, the book would be completed with this, with this item, and uh, obviously. I was a few pages away from completing it, so <clears throat> I've no idea where this item is. I'd have to go back and replay the book or retrace my steps to find this item. So that was the only sticking point I had was a certain item. Uh, Laterally in the book, as I said earlier on there, uh, some of the choices Ian gave, gives you, you kind of take, and uh, that could be your downfall. And I found at one point, uh, uh, when I was in the, the kind of cave looking for the Gorgon, etc., that... Uh, I was, there was a Gorgon there that I was making wrong decisions and I wasn't going to find my way out, but I eventually did. The book also provided a few comical situations where you would uh, slap a, an ogre in the face. Uh, I found that quite amusing. And also with Higley as well, you struck up a quite a, a kind of um, a funny relationship with a lot of kind of, a lot of banter between the two of you. Uh, now the only mistake I could see was, is probably a few more, but the one that came to mind was here, in a section here, where you can buy some items for pieces of gold. So I actually bought a Warhammer, and it was 10 pieces of gold. Uh, when I turned to page 74 in the book, the Warhammer price had changed uh, to... The Gnome Pocket's 5 pieces of gold tells you the Warhammer will give you more options in combat. So it changed from 10 pieces of gold to 5. So I wasn't sure how that was meant to play out, so it looks like an error from uh, the writer there. 
There's a lot in this game book I did like, and one of them was the artwork by the illustrator, uh, a chap by Mike McCarthy. The artwork is absolutely stonking in this game book, fantastic. Uh, Benny Brogan there. When, he really, when I looked at this book earlier on, in my first, wasn't it a review, but just as a quick run through the game books when they get released, uh, a quick run through the artwork, but when you actually see it, when you're playing it, it's uh, some of the artwork is fantastic. The soldiers there as well. Uh, but that one wasn't, the, wasn't one of the better ones, but uh, hold on, some here, uh, look at that, the Wraith, fantastic, well it's a demon, sorry, Screaming Demon, excellent, uh, look at the Ogre, awesome, uh, the, the Gorgon, that's not the Gorgon, but this one here, you've got a Screaming Lady, uh, hair with black sp spiders in it, fantastic, reminds me a bit like, um, what do you call it, House of Hell, that zombie sticking out, uh, here, you've got a kind of wizard type character, but isn't it a wizard? It's just a kind of old man with silver hair. And also the way the artwork's done, it's the buildings look like they're bending in each other, if you can see that as well. I kind of, there's like always a slight bend in the street, the way the artist has done this. Uh, I never came across him actually. Um, look at that there, zombies. Fantastic detail. Uh, a couple of other ones here. Marek. Sword standing out, fantastic. Yep, fantastic artwork in this game book. Look at the trolls here, amazing. So that's what I liked about the book. The book flowed really well. Uh, There's a great balance between uh, choices and uh, monster encounters by Ian Livingstone. And overall, as I thought the book was fantastic, the welcome comeback. What I didn't like about the book was nothing to do with the, the author or the artist. It's to do with Scholastic's publishing here, and uh, I'm just going to show you this here. For example, the first page after the main cover, that looks terrible. That's like a bad photocopy, or you printed at home, you've used too much ink, and you feel like you're just going to rub your finger along that page there, and ink's going to come off, but it doesn't. It's The contrast is far too dark, the blacks are far too dark for that cover there, so that's, I didn't like that at all. And also, it's just nitpicking. When you look at these, it's trying to uh, basically uh, show you what other game books you can purchase. There's a, a library of them here. Again, they look really bad photocopies. It's really bad looking. Especially this page here, House of Hell, Set of Hell of Chaos. It's like bad printing. It's, just, it's far too dark. But again, that's scholastic, that's the publishing. That's not to do with artists at all. But other than that, the game book itself, yeah, great welcome. Uh, edition by Ian Livingstone and I thoroughly enjoyed this game book. So that's Shadow of the Giants by Ian Livingstone and uh, if you like the content of this video please consider subscribing to the channel and give, giving this video a wee thumbs up, I really appreciate it. My next video is going to be, well, hopefully the next video, I might do one or two in between, is uh, The Secrets of Salamonis by Steve Jackson to see how this one compares to this one. But uh, yeah, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.